well in this video we will be uh, trying to derive the electromagnetic equations uh, two of them from the given Lagrangian of the electromagnetic field so this is the field st uh, strength tensor field strength and the form uh, this is a uh, two form and the uh, uh, representation of this in the matrix form is this and in this Lagrangian the field the fields are there are four fields A0, A1 a2 and a3 so we have four fields so the lagrangian the equation of motion for the fields are written as uh, del l over del a beta is equal to del alpha del l over del del alpha a beta now this is what we have uh, seen that these are the equations that we write now what uh, now what we can do so del l over del a beta is zero so this thing is zero because uh, there is no dependence uh, because f nu nu is an anti-symmetric uh, tensor and it is only dependent on the derivatives so now this can be written as uh, del alpha uh, of del minus 1 by 4 f mu nu f mu nu with respect to del alpha a beta this now we will try to simplify this entire thing. So this can again be written as uh, minus 1 by 4 del alpha. Uh, now we use the chain rule. So uh, f mu nu del f mu nu over del alpha a beta plus f mu nu uh, del f mu nu over del uh, alpha a beta. And this is entire thing. Okay, now what we can do is, uh, now you see we have to deriv um, uh, find the derivative of this and this guy. But we can do this with uh, in a single shot by seeing that, uh, by seeing that uh, f mu nu can be written as uh, eta mu sigma eta nu gamma uh, and then we have f uh, sigma gamma. So this is just raising the indices of both of them. So at the end of the day, uh, we have to calculate for these both of the two terms, we have to calculate derivatives of this form, uh, the derivatives of this form, del of f sigma gamma with respect to del alpha a beta. Now let's try to calculate this. So this derivative can be written as del over del a alpha, no, uh, so del alpha a beta. So it is del over del alpha a beta and then here we have uh, del sigma a gamma minus del gamma a sigma. Now this can again be uh, written like del over del, del alpha a beta. And here what we can do is uh, we can introduce the chronical delta. So this is an important um, uh, uh, step that we perform. So we write it as del alpha so I have introduced alpha and betas here by using the uh, Kronecker symbol. And now this can again be written as del alpha gamma and then I can put del alpha here, a beta here and delta uh, and delta of uh, delta of beta and here will be sigma. So we just write this entire thing in this form. But now we can do this integration because del alpha, del beta, uh, del alpha, a beta is there in both of the terms. So the final answer that we get is we get delta alpha sigma, delta beta gamma minus delta alpha gamma, delta beta uh, sigma. So this is the derivative of, uh, this is the derivative of f uh, sigma gamma with respect to del alpha a beta. Now we will use this entire thing, this derivative that we have found here, uh, this, this derivative, we will use this derivative uh, in our expression, uh, in our expression here. So that will give us, that will give us uh, minus 1 by 4 del alpha. Now you see uh, there was f mu nu, we wrote it in this form, eta mu sigma and eta nu gamma. So that form will be there. So it is f uh, mu nu, eta mu sigma, eta nu gamma. And then we have this thing. So that is uh, delta alpha sigma, delta beta gamma minus delta alpha gamma, delta beta sigma. And plus, plus uh, we have uh, 
f mu nu we have the derivative of uh, this term f mu nu uh, below but here we had sigma gamma we will just change it to f mu nu so that is delta of alpha mu delta of beta nu minus delta of alpha nu delta of beta mu this is equal to zero so this is the equation that we have obtained now now what we can do is we can use the property of the kronecker delta uh, to see that this equation is nothing but 1 by 4 del alpha f alpha beta minus f beta alpha plus f alpha beta minus f beta alpha this is equal to zero so this finally brings us to the equation uh, that is uh, that is uh, so th this beta alpha will give us minus so th this entire thing is just minus of f alpha beta so uh, the entire equation becomes del alpha f alpha beta equal to zero this is the equation but now this doesn't look uh, the form of uh, any of the maxwell equation so for this we will just do some uh, simplifications so first thing is to raise and the lower the index to get a equation of this form and now from here what we do is uh, we first set beta equal to zero so if beta is zero then we have the summation over uh, alpha index so it is of this form f uh, 0 uh, so beta is 0 so 0 0 plus del i f uh, i 0 equal to 0 but now f i 0 f i 0 we can read from this matrix so it is a uh, 0th column and then the rows will change but these are the electric fields so this entire thing del i f i 0 equal to 0 means uh, that divergence of e is equal to 0 so here we have the first Maxwell equation in absence of in vacuum in absence of any charge or source and now the second one comes from taking beta equal to uh, beta equal to i which can vary as 1 2 3 so for simplicity let's take it to be 1 then we will get del alpha f alpha 1 equal to 0 uh, so that now we will just sum so del 0 f 0 1 plus del 1 f uh, so f 1 1 plus del 2 f 2 1 plus del 3 f 3 1 equal to 0 now f 0 1 now f 0 1 we can again uh, look at our matrix here so it is uh, zeroth row and the first column it is minus so this gives us a minus del del t of e1 plus this will give us a minus uh, but f 1 1 is 0 so this term drops off so plus we have uh, now this term so this will give us a minus del del y because of the Lorentz signature but f21 f21 let's look at here so uh, row 0 1 2 1 so it is minus b3 so it is giving me a uh, minus b3 and plus this one will give me a minus del del z and then i have uh, here f31 so f31 is uh, uh, 31 is b2 so this entire thing now we can uh, readily understand what is this giving so this is actually giving us the curl of B, the first component equal to del del T of E1. So we can read off for the 2 and 3 with B. So the, and the second equation is curl of B is uh, del E over del T. So we get these two equations from uh, solving this Lagrangian and we have to do a lot of index manipulation. Uh, the other two equations that are there, uh, they come from something called as the Bianchi identity for electromagnetism. But uh, we will not discuss it here. So that's all for this video.